162. Can you please turn to 162? The question is, what is the importance of having a Christian walk like that of the Church of Colossae, as explained in Colossians 3.8? I'm going to read it really quick. It says, we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And keep in mind, we're talking about why do we want this kind of walk? We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, having heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have toward all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in the heavens of which you heard from in the word of the truth of the good news, which has come to you, even as it is in all the world and is bearing fruit and growing as it does in you also since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth, even as you learned of Epaphras, Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, who is a faithful servant of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the spirit. Why is that the kind of walk that we want to have? Why? Mm. You want me to answer you guys real quick? Yeah. Yes, please. So let's break that apart. We're going to start in verse three. This is a church that is constantly praying for each other. Constantly. It says that praying always for you. He, that he's saying that I'm constantly going to God on your behalf. Mm -hmm right? The next thing that he says is, I have heard about your faith. How many of us can say that other folks have heard about the faith that we possess? That they, that our faith is so dynamic that other folks is talking about our walk with Christ, right? The next thing that it says is not only was other folks talking about their faith, but they're also talking about the love they have for one another. And remember, we learned last week that God said, you will know my people by their love. That was a statement. You want to know if you belong to Christ? Baby, you're supposed to be full of love. Paul is telling them, hey, we constantly hear about your faith and we're constantly hearing about your love for one another. Then we go down and it says, not just for the click, you know, just have love for the click, for them folks that, you know, fall in line. You have love for all the saints. So that means that you loving on the prickly people. You loving on the folks that you just like, you know, you see them coming and you won't go the other way. You loving you on those loving on people that others wouldn't do. Yes. And they see that. Yes, that is why God says, you will know my people by their love. Mm -hmm. He did not say, you will know my people by their perfection. Mm -hmm. He did not say that you're going to know my people by how well their hair is whipped and their clothes is on. He didn't say that. Right. Because when I'm loving on somebody, me and, 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 and Sister Vidya, we, we tend to keep it real about how we feel about some foolishness. Mm. When I can love past the foolishness, that's love. When I can forgive past the foolishness, that's, that's love. love. And it's not me, because no. I got to make that clear. Definitely. I'm not holy enough to forgive somebody that don't <laughs> deserve to be forgiven. Mm -mm. I'm not holy enough to love on somebody that don't deserve my love, that have done nothing to deserve that. But when I can do that, that's not me doing that. That's the Jesus in me doing there you it. Go. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the last thing you see to right? do it. We definitely can't do it on our own. Amen. Come on, come Amen. on. Amen. And so we see here that these people had faith, they were praying for each other and they had love. For mm -hmm. all the saints, not just the clique. The next thing we see is these, these folks have hope. We're mm -hmm. supposed to have hope pleases God because we have hope in those things that are not seen yet. Right? Amen. How can I know that I'm going to heaven when I ain't seen it? Right. How can I know about a Jesus that I've never touched and I've never seen? It's the hope 
that I have in Jesus. It's the hope that I have in heaven. It's the hope that I have in salvation. These sisters and brothers in Christ had hope, hope. right? The next thing that we see is they're laying up treasures in heaven. Y'all, y'all know I want my stuff. <laughs> I Amen. want my stuff, okay. right? So these people, because of their faith, because of their love, because of their hope, it says laid up for you in the heavens. They're racking up rewards in heaven. They might not have much down here, but this ain't my home. Listen, if I go to Detroit to visit, I'm not trying to rack up a house, a car, furniture, pay a light bill. And I'm only going to be there for a little bit. So yes, it's great if you collect stuff here on earth, but, but keep in mind, this ain't you racking up stuff that you can't take with you. Isn't it a horrible thing if I have every type of riches here on earth, but I have nothing in heaven? <laughs> I'm reading in my personal time in the book of Corinthians. I think I'm in first Corinthians. And it says that the believers, your works will be tested by fire. Mm. And he's going to throw our works in the fire and see if it burns mm. up. Now, the solace in that scripture is it tells us that yes, you will still have salvation, even if all your works burn up, but that's it. You, you just say, y'all, I don't want to be at the gate looking at all y'all having fun. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be at the gate while y'all sitting at the table. I don't want to be at the gate when y'all got y'all new rock and y'all new clothes and your new little crown on your head and y'all looking at me going, oh, poor shell. She out there doing the gate duty again. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be that. I want God to look at me and say, come my good and faithful servant and girl, let me bless you because you did what I called you to do while you was there. That's what I want, right? And these people were doing that. And lastly, here, well, second to lastly, it says that they were bearing fruit and growing. Remember last week we learned we do not want to be stagnated Christians. God is not a standstill God. He is not a God that just sits around doing nothing. He's a moving God, a progressive God. Amen. Amen. So it's natural that his people should be moving and progressing with him, right? Mm -hmm. So we look here in the church of Colossians, we see that they were bearing fruit. Remember we said bearing fruit is not just financial. We mm -hmm. People that, that do the prosperity preaching talks about finances, but that's not what that means. When we look, remember, we want to keep things in context. Mm -hmm. He's talking about your life as a whole. Mm -hmm. Are you bearing much fruit for the kingdom of God? Is your life reflecting what you say you believe? Can I look? Remember, people are talking about this church. They're talking to other folks about, girl, have you heard about the church of Colossae? They, they love it on each other. They have faith. They're praying for each other. They're loving all this good stuff. They're bearing much fruit, but they're, it doesn't just stop there. They're not only bearing fruit, they're growing. They're adding to their numbers. They're adding to their knowledge. They're adding to their understanding. They're growing. As a people in Christ, they're growing. I don't want to be in the same spot spiritually this year, next year, and the year after. Amen. Amen. I want to look back and say, oh, Lord, you have grown me. Oh, me, me Lord. Yes. So Amen. Amen. Now, the truth is, in order for him to grow you up, he's going to have to bring you through some stuff. Yes, he is. He's going to have to put you in the fire. Remember, we said our works is going to be put in the fire. Mm -hmm. I got to have my feet burned in the fire to let me know, baby, I got to burn all that crap off of you because you're kind of crazy right now. I'm going to have to, you know, prune you, cut, let's cut that out and cut this out and let's, you know, groom this part. That don't feel good. That does not feel good at all. When my mm -hmm. husband and I got into it at the doctor's office and y'all, I got to share this with you because you know, we got to keep it real, right? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? 
he told me I had his Medicare card in my purse. I promise you, I do not remember putting it in my purse. We got home. I dumped out my purse. Guess where the Medicare card was? In, my in your purse, purse ma'am. In my purse. So it was not a good day. But God has to prove me like, okay, now that you know you're wrong, how are you going to handle it? How are you going to handle it now that you, that you got to admit that you're wrong, you got to eat crow, how are you going to handle it? So it never feels good when God is pruning, but in order for us to bear much fruit and grow, yes, we got we, we to let him do it. That's right. Amen. If we find ourselves that we aren't, he's not, we're not feeling that uncomfortable feeling. We have to say, okay, is it that I'm resisting God? Because, you know, God's going to show it to us. If we belong to him, he's going to show you your stuff. But are we saying to ourselves, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. Or, oh, I don't, you know, I'm fine the way I am. Because sometimes when we get up in age, I know I love my sisters. We, you know, you know, I love y'all. Sometimes as we age, we get stuck in our ways and we don't want God to come in and, and change stuff. God says, I don't stop messing with y'all and pruning y'all. He said, I'm getting you ready for heaven. And I'm doing that to the day I call you home. Mm -hmm. The next thing that we see here is it says that these were faithful servants. Yes, they were. The church of Colossae. Can I be faithful when things all hell and broke loose in my life? Can I be faithful then? Can say that again, faithful? Sister Shelly. Say that again. Really? When you when you say, I'm, I'm like Brother Job, just all hell has just been unleashed on today. Can I be faithful then? Can I be faithful when that thing that I've been praying for, that I have been fasting for, that thing that I, I go and I just cry out to God for, he says, no. Can I be faithful? Mm. Can I be faithful when something happens in my life that just don't make no, like, Lord, why would you let this happen? I've been faithful to you. I've worshiped you. Yes, yes. You called me to do. Why would you let this happen to me? Can I be faithful then? Here's one. Can I be faithful when girlfriend down the street who don't give a good mm -mm about the Lord, Jesus, the church, nothing else, and she's prospering, nothing wrong is happening to her. She is just growing and, and flaunting it all up in my face. Can I be faithful then? About being faithful to the races. Yes. Ooh, yes. 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 We just had folks come into a mall and just shoot up some folks. Can we pray for their deliverance? Can we pray and say, Lord, they still need you in their life? God, the reason why they did this is because they don't know you. Let this horrific thing bring those involved closer to you. Lord, if, if, if I have a chance to speak to somebody that has a heart like that, get, put the words in my mouth that can speak to them. Can we do that? Can we be faithful when Satan is standing right in front of us? And y'all, when we got that crazy person standing in front of us that's trying to get us to go there, now, remember I said we got to keep it real. It's hard not to go there when you write. When you know, like if somebody's coming to you, calling you out of your name, you know they don't have the right to do that. You don't have the right to tell me that because my skin is darker than yours, who I am. You don't have the right to do that. But can I endure that if it's going to bring them closer to Christ? Or is it more important <coughs> for my voice to be heard? Because sometimes God is calling us to be silent. Amen. Can we do that? Because that's the kind of faithful servant that he's looking for. Are you willing to have your name drugged through the mud if it means I will be glorified? Are you willing to do without if it means that it will bring you closer to me? That's a faithful servant. So when we're asking the question that we asked and we said, 
What is the importance of having a Christian walk <laughs> like that of the Church of Colossae, as explained in Colossians 1, 3 through 8? Why is that important? Why do we want to have these elements in our lives? Why? That, that's be, because that's how we grow. That's how we get closer to God. Yes. That's how we become, when we are walking and doing exactly what he has told us to do in his word, that's how we build that stronger relationship that he expects from us because we're his children. And that's what he wants from each and every one of us. Yes, 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 yes. And um, just for those, my Bible study group, we've talked about it several times, but just for those of you out in YouTube land, God is not calling us to be perfect of ourselves. He's not calling us to, you know, you got to get rid of all your bad habits on your own. He says, you bring all that crap to me and I will help you get through. Mm -hmm. My temper, my, my disposition, I, I, I'm a living witness today. He kept it all. Mm. Chick a lock, chick a lock, chick a lock. But I have to be willing to allow him to do that. Mm -hmm. Jesus is a gentleman. He will not force himself on any of us. So if you are not willing to allow him, mm -hmm. maybe he will leave you alone. Amen. Amen. But then you cannot blame him when you fall short of what mm -hmm. he has called for you. You want to grow. You want to feel his presence in your life. You want to feel God working in your life, then you've got to let him move in your life. Mm -hmm. You've got to let him prune you. You've got to let him speak to you. I love the fact that we, we need to know how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. He speaks to us through other people. He speaks to us through scripture. He speaks Amen. to us through burdens on our heart. I, I share with people all the time, when your mama is talking, she can be in a room full of people talking all at the same time. You know your mama's voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you can pick it out of a room full mm -hmm. of people. That's because it's familiar to you. You you've grown up with it. You've heard it enough that you recognize it. She doesn't even have to be facing you, but you can tell when she's angry. You mm -hmm. can tell when she's upset, when she's concerned, when she's hurt, just by the tone of her voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. That's because we've gotten adjusted, accustomed to what mama sounds like. We want to hone our sounding skills for God. We want to start tuning Amen. in to how so God we've got to get our ears and our spirits and our hearts and our minds accustomed to hearing God's voice. And the great thing about God, the wonderful thing about God, think about brother Elijah. What did he do? He said, God, I want to hear you. He went to him. Show me how to hear you. I want to know when you come. I want to see you. David did. And God doesn't, that's not a prayer that God leaves undone because mm -hmm. he wants you to hear him. Amen. So I can go to him and say, Lord, I I heard what Sister Michelle said. I heard what Shelly said. I heard what Vic Vidia said, but I just don't mm -hmm. hear you. I just, I, I don't hear you. I don't, I, it just, it, it's a disconnect. Lord, show me how to hear you and then be seeking believing that he's going to answer that he's going to reveal yeah. himself to you and tell you this is what i sound like baby this is when i'm talking to you i'm going i'm going to reveal myself to you so that the next time you hear it you know what it sounds like think about those keys remember we learned last week we can't find keys sitting down saying where's my keys i got to get up and look for them so i want to hear from god i got to be expecting to hear from him right um, we're at almost seven o'clock. So I'm going to run through these. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to run through the rest of page 162. And that way we can start on 163 and we come back. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Okay. So according to Colossians 1, 5, where is our treasure being increased when we love our brothers and sisters in the Lord? That is a conditional. Remember when I said, when we have children that dishonor their parents, they don't realize they're shortening their lives. Mm -hmm. That was the very first blessing, promise that God gave. Mm -hmm. Honor your mother and father and I mm -hmm. will extend your life, right? Mm -hmm. 
Amen. There is another promise. You love on the saints and you are racking up rewards in heaven. Mm. So Hallelujah. it's to my benefit to love on the unlovable. It's to my benefit to forgive Amen. those that don't deserve forgiveness. Amen. And, and let's be real. We're talking about the saints. I, he hasn't even addressed the world yet. He's talking about the he's body. About the church. The body. I know, I know we don't like to discuss it, but you know, some of us Christian folk, don't make us not Christian, but some of us is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like, woo. Kind of crazy we are. <laughs> yes. And so God is saying, Amen. I know that all of y'all come with your little problems and hangups and personalities. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to get through that because I'm expecting y'all to love on each other. And he's letting us know, hey, Come because on. you because you put self aside and said, I'm going to love on my sisters and brothers, I'm going to bless you because of that. I'm going to bless you. You racking up rewards in heaven. The next one says, according to verses six, five and six in Colossians one, on what basis was Paul saying the church of Colossians were bearing much fruit? Let's go back. Because of the okay. hope of experiencing what is like. Say it again. Because of the hope of experiencing what is laid up, reserved, and waiting for you in heaven. That, and he explains what kind of fruits they're bearing. Mm -hmm. they're, in the spirit. Yes, they're praying for each other. They have faith in Jesus. That is a big one. Because I can believe in Jesus and not have faith in him. Mm. amen those are two different things and we really got to get that because if our in, in the word god tells us to pray for faith that means that i can be saved and not have the amount of faith i need so i need to be praying for faith right because he says that faith saved me and we tend to just stop there okay well i had faith that god could save me so that's all i need but do I have enough faith to believe that when your group got together and prayed that God was going to answer that prayer? Right. Do I have that kind of faith? And that's, that's faith beyond just salvation. I need, you know, mm -hmm. the faith of salvation. Yes, that saved me having that kind of faith. But can I have faith that God is working even after salvation? Do I have faith to believe that I can call on him and he will answer? <laughs> will have that kind of faith so mm -hmm. they're saying they had faith in jesus that's part of that fruit then it said that they was loving on all the saints that's part of their fruit mm -hmm. it says that they were growing listen everywhere that you see the spirit moving you see people growing when things get stagnated you say, okay, something is wrong something we're not doing right nobody's growing nobody's maturing even in terms of adding to the number. When you hear me say to you, I'm praying that God will bring more people in. I'm not praying because I need to have a big old crowd in order to, to, to share the word of God. I'm asking God, show me that I'm, I'm in the right direction. Show me, add to the numbers to show that I'm bearing fruit. Think of it this way. If you've been with a company for 20 years, and you're still making the same salary that you made when you first got hired, is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. You would be like, okay, so I don't get a raise. I don't get no increase of any kind. I don't get nothing. Mm -hmm. You would think something was wrong with that company, but yet so many of us settle in mm -hmm. our spirit lives in not growing. And we would not settle in our human life for not seeing an increase. We want to see, we want to have our knowledge increase, our spiritual understanding increase, our numbers increase. How many people have you talked to about the Lord this week? How many people have you shared? And when I say talk about the Lord, you know, everybody thinks that you necessarily have to, okay, now sit down so that I can share the gospel with you so that you will know what it takes to be saved. Well, sometimes before I can get to that conversation, I got to first start off with, um, hey, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Because God met a person's immediate need before he shared the gospel. Mm -hmm.
That's when he fed people. Remember, he fed the people first. Amen. Then he started talking to them. So sometimes we got to meet that immediate need before we can get them in the state of mind to hear the gospel, the gospel, right? Right. But if we're not willing to even start the connection, to even say, you know, let me pray for you, sister. I, you seem like you got a lot on your heart. Can I just pray with you? And they're like, oh, well, um, okay. I didn't, okay. Because maybe they didn't even know you was a Christian or maybe they kind of thought you were, but they wasn't really sure. And now I've opened up a whole dialogue with them. The greatest compliment I ever had in my whole life, and I try to share this with as many people as I can. I knew this man that was an atheist and he was going for a job. He wanted to get a promotion, a pretty significant promotion. And he comes to my office and he said, Ms. Cooper, can you pray for me? Uh, pray for you. I was shocked. I was just mm -hmm. like, didn't you, uh, you know how the Scooby-Doo character goes, whoa? Because <laughs> I was like, uh, you said you was an atheist. I am, but I know that you're a believer. And I really need this job. It means a lot to me and my family. I could say, well, why would I pray for an atheist? I need to pray for you because I want you to see God work. Amen. I want you to see how God is. So that when I come to you and say, didn't he do it for you? Didn't he open up the door for you? Don't tell me there ain't no God. That's meeting his immediate need. Hey. That he can hear from you. Yep. I yes. see it, sis. So Damn. it may have seemed weird to pray for an atheist, but when that prayer was answered, you can't deny that my God worked. Say it. You can't deny that I prayed for you. And it wasn't me who did it. Right. It was the God I served who did it. Who did it. Amen. Now, let, now Amen. let's sit down and talk. Amen. Now you can sit down and have a conversation with him because he'll he's going to receive it and he'll listen. Yes. So sometimes if you may want to share the gospel. Y'all, I, I open up so many doors with food. Because I'll bake things for people, give them cookies, give them cakes. Just so that I can start that dialogue because they'll come to you and they'll say, oh, girl, that cookies was good. You like that? Oh, blah, 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 blah. What church you go to? Um, I ain't been to church in so long. Well, now we got a conversation because now we can talk about food. Well, girl, I'm going to bake you a cake, but we're going to talk about that church next time I come to talk to you now. So sometimes feeling that immediate need will help you get past the hump so that you can talk to them about the serious stuff. I saw two people's mics come on. Letitia, you was the first one. Um, that reminded me of that story you were talking about before. I know I'm going to get it wrong. Where the the man brought his daughter um, because yeah, and sometimes people see the faith in us and see how God works in our lives, and they want some of that they just don't yes. know how to get it. Yes, yeah. I love that phrasing. I love that phrasing. They don't know how to get it. They don't. God phrases it this way he says how will they know if no one tells them mm -hmm. if we don't share our faith mm -hmm. how will they know mm -hmm. my husband's gonna wind up chewing off his arm if i don't end soon so we're gonna go ahead and pray and um i'm gonna pray because i got a couple of people we need to pray mm -hmm.